with Tracy in LA. Hi everyone, welcome back to my podcast, Dance Journey. Today we have special guest, Sydney Kinney. Hello. <laughs> I'm so excited to have her because I don't know a lot about her. So we're gonna le- we're all gonna learn so much, which is exciting. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how I know her in a minute, but first of all, we're gonna talk about the class that we just took, which mm-hmm. was my class. Her <laughs> class is Sydney's beginner tap class, which actually I have been meaning to try for mm-hmm. a while. Because right now, I don't have a day job. That might be changing soon. But yep. I keep being like, oh, I have to go to Sydney's class sometime in the morning. Because like you were saying in class, there's not a lot of tap. It's no. hard to find. Oh, my gosh. There are some tap classes. But also, to there's not enough where you, if your schedule's crazy that you mm-hmm. can for sure find one yep. that like works with mm-hmm. your schedule and like is mm-hmm. near you. Um, and also beginner. Yep. That's nice. Yep. Because I haven't. I used to take tap kind of regularly. I used to take it at Edge. Did you yeah, take it at was, Edge? Yeah, I was a Scully. Okay, that's yeah. what I thought because I, like, <laughs> yeah. vaguely remember you. I remember, like, seeing mm-hmm. you. Um, but, yeah, I used to take basic with Johnny Hobbs for a mm-hmm. while. Yep. Then I took beginner. That was mm-hmm. the next one yep. back mm-hmm. then. So, and beginner was so, his beginner was so hard for me yep. at the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it probably would be really hard for me right now as well. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so I did that for a while, but then I haven't taken tap now in probably a year or so. Wow. So I was like. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> really? From, seriously, I would have never guessed that from today. <laughs> okay, never. well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, you know what it is about tap, though? First of all, I loved your class. Mm-hmm. I like that it's, like, fun and, like, yeah. hip-hop style, mm-hmm. which is obviously your style. Yeah. Um. I thought you did a really great job of, like, just explaining for someone that doesn't know, but also, like, it's also challenging enough for someone that already knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially, like you said, the briskness. Yeah. (laughs) It's always fast. It's like, my class just knows. It's not that hard of moves. And then she puts the music on. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, Mm -hmm. no, it's hard, actually. (laughs) It's, like, it's hard for me to get all of the sounds when Mm -hmm. it's quick. I'm realizing that I'm, like... Mm-hmm. I'm not actually doing the back part of the shuffle. Yeah. I'm just like, and I just yeah. go to the next thing and it's not clear. So like maybe if I'm doing it with people, maybe you can't tell as much. But if you were like, by yourself, go by yourself, yeah. probably like, uh, you're missing like four sounds. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure. That's yeah. what was good about during the pandemic because I took tap virtually yeah. out of New York. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of cool. I'm sure it was super annoying for the teacher. I can't imagine did you yep. teach tap virtually ever? Um, I did. My my students back home, but not like a professional class. Okay, okay. That sound. <laughs> <laughs> but you would do, would you do privates or a good group? Both. Okay. Both. Mm-hmm. I'm sure like maybe privates aren't as bad because you can like have their sound on. Yep. And, but like if you're doing a group, I don't, I felt so bad for the teacher. I'm like, yep. they're not hearing anything. Nothing. In my case, I didn't even have a way to put my computer at first where they could even like see my feet. feet. Eventually mm-hmm. I figured something out. But mm-hmm. for the first like eight classes, I was like, well, mm-hmm. I guess I'm just on my own here. Yep. <laughs> and some people didn't even have like hardwood floor too. So they right. do it on like carpet or, oh, you yeah, know what that's I mean? True. So it's like, I can't, it was hard to help. When yeah. you're like, I, one, it's glitching and I can't see anything that's yeah. going on. And two, I can't hear anything. So it's like, I don't know other than just, please come back. <laughs> please keep practicing. You know? I know. I felt so bad for the teachers. I did have a, gar- I do still have a garage. I was able to do it. Nice. In. So actually yeah. that worked out great. Mm-hmm. But um, I liked it for myself because normally I can't tell how bad I'm doing because everyone's together. Yep. And I was like, ooh, I can tell this sound is off, yep. you know? And so actually it helped me, and I was getting into it for a while, and then I just got into other classes. And tap is one of my favorite styles, but I guess it's one of my – I guess it's – I have, like, eight favorite styles, and maybe it's, like, seventh or eighth. Yep. So yep. <laughs> it ends up getting pushed sure. to the side. Yeah. But then every time I do it, I'm like, oh, I like this. Mm-hmm. And I wish I could go consistently so I could actually get better because then it's mm-hmm. so cool. Like, watching you tap, I'm like, oh, my oh. gosh, it, like, <laughs> sounds are so clear. It sounds so yeah. good. But, yeah, it was really fun to come today. The other thing that's hard for me is the balls of my feet hurt. I don't know if you remember this from when mm. you – I mean, I'm sure you started tapping a million years ago. Yeah. But in the beginning, mm-hmm. at least for me, until I start going regularly for a mm-hmm. while, because you are on the ball of your feet so much, mm-hmm. it really kind of, like, hurts a little for me. I, I've i never experienced never, it. Never, Other than um, – actually, last week I, or three weeks ago, I was on a job for the first time in heel taps. And that's oh, where I okay. did feel the ball of my foot. But I think it's just because I'm so used to it being flat. Right. And that's how I've trained my entire life. Yeah. Um, 
But I think between, like, comp dance being on Releve constantly growing up that I was like, well, everything hurts. <laughs> How do you pick and choose where does true. it come from, you know? That's true. I guess if you're, like, a professional dancer, you're like, I, everything hurts yep. all the time. What's the difference? But <laughs> When's the next time I, I sit down? <laughs> it's funny, though, because I would think my toes or the ball of my feet would hurt more from, like, ballet or yeah. something. Yeah. But even in ballet, we're, like... We're up a little bit and then we're yeah, down. Yeah, you're down. But mm-hmm. tap, unless you're doing like, what is it? It's a stomp when mm-hmm. it's both, when mm-hmm. you put your whole foot, mm-hmm. unless you're doing that, it seems like most of it's just yep. on the ball. Yep. And I'm like, dang. And then yep. they're kind of sliding around. So you kind of have to, I don't know, I guess like build muscles yeah. or and mm-hmm. balance. You My know? calf muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Sydney had us doing, what are they called? Pullbacks? Pullbacks, In the beginning, yep. which I was like, oh, I've, I've heard that word, and I don't remember what I know it's hard. I'm like, I know like it's two hard. two people raised their hand, and were like, yeah, I think I've done that. I was that like, before. I am not going to raise my hand, because she was like, has anyone done this before? I'm like, I've heard it before. I'm sure I've attempted it before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you explained it really well, and I, it was cool to kind of get that like feeling like oh I know I remember that I've tried to do yeah. this before like not that I've ever done it well but mm-hmm. like muscle memory so that was mm-hmm. kind of cool but when we were doing we were doing them across the floor I was like oh I'm gonna feel this tomorrow <laughs> this is I'm using this a is lot it. of yeah. muscles I haven't used in a while yes. <laughs> but yeah. yeah I thought it was super fun you've been teaching the class not for too long or have you um I think August of last year. Oh, but I've that's been pretty long. Actually. Subbing for like a year and a half too. Oh yeah. wow! Okay, I didn't mm-hmm. realize that. Yeah. I guess yeah. Maybe I just noticed it because I used to have a day job, so I probably noticed it yeah. just after that. I was and like, plus, oh. they they only had one tap class at the time, so I was just subbing the one, and then okay. now they have Greg's class, and then okay, my class and his as well. is like an intermediate more. Yeah, okay. all levels, and then mine's all beginner. Yep. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I love they have the beginner. So yeah, if anyone wants to take that, it was a really great class. Beginner yeah. tap. What day is today? Wednesday. Wednesday. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. <laughs> um, definitely worth it. Super yeah. fun. And Sydney's like really chill. So yeah. no stress. <laughs> yeah. Whole goal, I think, uh, for me at least teaching is I know when I came to Millennium for the first time and I was just so f- afraid and scared because you see all the YouTube videos that we like all grew up on and you know. Yeah. It's very intimidating. It's yeah. a very intimidating like name and space and I always wanted to create somewhere where like they can come in and they can feel like oh I don't know any of this and it's fine and I'm not yeah. stressed and I just want it to be more fun um than anything I yeah. think no, yeah no I love that because yeah a lot of the classes are pretty intimidating yeah. especially when you're when you're new yeah um and you just don't know mm-hmm. what's going in on in a good way too like it's great to have that like push and that mm-hmm. um like competitiveness in class um but I do like to have you know sometimes a safe space to just be like try something new or feel comfortable not necessarily knowing everything you yeah know? and still have fun while doing it like it's not some scary big thing yeah you know? yeah and especially since it is tap and it's not a style that everyone's yeah. doing mm-hmm. like, like these days that's like super hyped up so mm-hmm. it's nice to make the space really safe so it can yeah. let's yeah, let's please, revive this please come tap I love tap I mean I really do what if I ever see like anyone tapping on Instagram I'm like glued yeah. I, I love watching mm-hmm. good tap it's so fun so I'm like oh one day okay one day I'm gonna yeah. get into this consistently again yeah. but um yeah so that was really fun so the way that I know Sydney I don't know do people call you Sid anything Sid I, Sydney I, all of the above <laughs> I feel like I've never called you Sid so it's probably not gonna happen right now but I was like I'm, I think people do call you that yep um but yeah I we were t- I was seeing you in Nico's class mm-hmm. pretty often because I was taking that pretty consistently I haven't been there in a while because I've just been like so busy yeah. with different things going on but um yeah you're always like one of the best dancers and so you're always fun to watch but like I never talked to you or anything but then um I don't know. I think one time we were kind of walking back to our cars around the same time and mm-hmm. we just chatted for like a little bit. Yeah. It was like one or two times that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, she's so nice. Oh, and like, you. <laughs> I want to have her on my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you're such a good dancer. And so I'm sure you have like a cool story of like how you kind of got to where yeah. you are at. And you seem like you have like, such a nice personality. And I was like, oh, I'm just like, I'm curious about her. Yeah. So, um, and then I think I did used to see you around at Edge. Yeah. I didn't, definitely mm-hmm. didn't know you back then, mm-hmm. but. Did you used to take Dean's class, Dean I Bass? I did. Okay. I used to assist his um, chair stuff and his jazz and jazz funk and hip hop. Okay. Yeah. At Edge, did you mm-hmm. do it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Because I used that was the main. I took his beginner 
jazz yeah. funk and mm-hmm. his beginner hip hop. But sometimes we would have advanced dancers come to those classes because mm-hmm. they just like liked them or yeah. whatever. So I felt like I saw you around there somewhere, or maybe yeah. I just saw you in the halls. Well, I looked very different back then. I had super long hair. Okay. Like, super long hair um which that's a kind of funny thing we can get into yeah let's get Um, into it right now so I moved out here in 2019 okay right after graduating high school from where Ohio yeah I mean go Bucks (laughs) (laughs) promo Midwest I'm like I'm not from Ohio literally football it's all okay that's what that's what it's um but right before I moved out to LA I broke my fifth metatarsal. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I completely shattered it. Oh, my gosh. And I had gotten accepted into the scholarship program, and so I had to call Bill and Randy Edge and be like, Wow. I already signed my lease. Oh, All man. All this stuff. I was, wow. Everything was packed. I was ready to go, and then they told me I had to have full reconstructive surgery. Wow. On my foot. So I had that done. And thankfully, I'm so, so, so thankful to Edge and all of them because they still took me, okay. which was incredible. Um, but could you, da- could you do anything? Mm-mm. Okay. I actually wasn't even able to get out here until a week after the program started because okay. of my surgery. I wasn't right. allowed to fly. Um, but I got out here, and I would sit and watch every single class wow. for 10 hours a day. Mm-hmm. So I still had my same schedule that I would have had as a dancer, but I went and watched all day. And now, did you just think this is going to be worth it anyways? Or was it literally just because you already signed your lease? You're like, I'm just I'm here, so I, I just have to do it? It's been my dream my entire life. I was like, You're like I'm nothing not. is stopping me. <laughs> literally wow. nothing. Yeah. I can't believe you did that. Mm-hmm. For how? So wait, but not the whole time. Not the whole time. I got, we started in... July of 2019 and I got cleared to start dancing again in December. Okay. And then That's a I got time, only though. three months before COVID happened. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know I was going to say it yeah. was right before COVID. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Yeah. So you were only really dancing, dancing there for a few months. Yes. Mm-hmm. I can't even believe that. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I feel like I had seen you around, but I didn't know. Obviously, mm-hmm. I didn't really know you and I didn't know that you were like watching classes Mm -hmm. I definitely thought you were dancing I mean I probably saw you when you were dancing I mean I did also don't suggest don't do this (laughs) but I did push it a little bit like if I was in a boot when I when they cleared me off of my crutches and I was no longer non-weight bearing I would be like oh last 15 minutes of dance I would just kind of like get up in the back and try and do it in my boot, you know, wow. just stuff like that. But uh, every single class that I watched, I would learn it still wow. when I was sitting because I was like, I can't let go of like my memory yeah. and my pickup abilities. Yeah. Would you um, like kind of do it with your arms a little bit mm-hmm. when you were sitting? And then like feet, I would have it out in front of me and okay. just kind of like, okay, left foot back behind. That's really cool because I that really enhances your ability to just watch someone yeah. pick it up. And now that I've been taking like all kinds of classes and I was taking I've taken um Kyle Hanagami's master class mm-hmm. a couple times which is a little too hard for me but I still went <laughs> <He's> awesome <laughs> and um because he gets so many people he will have like you know the first the front half of the class like sit mm-hmm. and he will teach a bunch of eight yep. counts and he won't necessarily go back yep. and really teach them again when the front half is risen yep. he'll just like he's like once the back half has it then he has the front half get up and then mm-hmm. he goes over it for like 30 seconds or less yeah. and then he's like let's move on and I the first time I took his class I was so stressed out it's like wait he's still he hasn't asked us to stand back up yet yeah how am I supposed to learn this because yep. I've never practiced learning mm-hmm. from just like sitting you know and mm-hmm. the second time I took his class I was prepared for that yeah and I'm like okay he's having a sit I knew this was gonna happen so then I was like Tracy you better like learn it because the first time I thought he was gonna oh he's gonna do it again for us mm-hmm. oh no he's not so nope <laughs> I'm like, so that skill, yeah. I'm like, I'm sure that skill is really, really helpful. And mm-hmm. also, actually, because I was injured a while back, or I got injured at the end of the pandemic, mm-hmm. and I started trying to take, or Dean was reaching out to me to come take his class that yeah. he started after the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I literally, like, I can't be on my foot right now. And yeah. so I was like, can I, so literally, I did go to one class, and I did do what you did, only once, but I sat in a chair, yeah. and I did it with a top hat, because I was so sad about not dancing, because yep. I was dancing oh. a lot, and I was mm-hmm. like, I'll just, I'll just get it with, the, and I think Dean was like, I love how full out Tracy is with the top half. Of yes, yes. I was getting so into it, yes. but I wasn't moving my legs. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and now they have so much like 
wheelchair dancing and stuff out there. So, I mean, that's really cool. I'm so glad that, like, dance is becoming more accessible to any type of situation you might be in because it's so sad if you love it so much, Mm -hmm. whether it's an injury or something that is going to be your whole life situation. So, anyway, that's really cool to hear. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah, we'll hear, we'll talk more about, like, your kind of whole history with dance. Mm-hmm. But um, right now, what would you say, what does your current dance life look like? Like, what's a week in the life of Sydney Kinney? I will say, and I feel like this is with mo- da- most dancers, but every week it changes. I was going to say, like, it's probably always different. Every, there is, I mean, I can have my, like, my class schedule and my teaching schedule and, like, who I would ideally like to take on a week, but it really changes <laughs> literally every single week and i'll think on monday i'm like oh this is what my week's going to look like and then by thursday i'm like i have done nothing that i was <laughs> like, you know what i mean but i usually i mean i teach millennium yeah on wednesdays mm-hmm. every week and then i also teach at a recreational competition studio out here oh okay um so i teach classes over there about twice a week okay um and then sometimes if i'm free i'll sub more um, and that's kids or kids. Okay, everything from two to eighteen. Okay, so nice. big range. Yeah, that is a big range. <laughs> um, and it's kind of nice because I get the balance of like adults, and you know, I can kind of be more myself. And yeah. then like with the kids, where I'm, I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm still the same person, but it's yeah. like my baby Adjusted voice, a yeah. and you know, like <laughs> all of that stuff. But then I try to take class at least once a day doesn't happen but that's the goal (laughs) um just because I'm so busy and then a job will come up or rehearsal comes up and then it interferes with training but I it doesn't go a week without me not taking a class yeah I mean minimum three yeah you know that's good I know it's funny that like the more professional of a dancer you become you probably like you take can't really take class and it's I mean, everyone, I think, still tries their best to train, and I'm definitely not doing, like, for example, what I was doing the hours at Edge. Yeah. Um, but I I love taking class, too. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like prep for my work. It feels like home base a little yeah. bit, you know what I mean? Of like, oh my gosh, I've had this stressful week. I've been on this job. I've been on this, whatever, rehearsals, trying to get this job, didn't get this job, and then you come back to class and you're like, oh... Okay, I'm centered again. I'm nice. I'm ready to, you know. So is it generally not a stressful situation, even if it's a hard class, because you're like, at least this isn't an audition. I'm not getting paid. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're just like, I'm learning and having fun. Yes. I will say that it took a while to get to that feeling. Okay. Because when you, like I said, what we talked about earlier, um, like places like Millennium or Edge back in the day or um, ML, like it is very... It's, like, shocking a little bit when you get there and you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, I saw this person on Instagram and they're in this class and I grew up watching this person and you know what I mean? So, at first, I will say I put a lot of pressure on myself to, like, be good and, like, not care about what others thought or what I expected to happen for myself in that class. Mm -hmm. So, it took a while to become comfortable And not put that on myself, if that makes sense. Like, the stress of the class not going the way I want it to go. But I will say, at least for the past year and a half, I haven't had that feeling. Oh, that's awesome. Of, like, oh, I'm so angry I didn't get in this group. Or, you know, just just stuff like that. Or I I messed up in the video. Or, I don't know, I wore the wrong outfit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's the worst. I know that thing literally. (laughs) That is the worst. I'll watch a video later and be like, well, I'm not wearing that outfit. Yeah, again. never. That's, I'm <laughs> throwing that in the trash. Yes. <laughs> Why did I think that was yes. cute? <laughs> but I, it's, been, it's been a while since I felt like that. And That's it's great. It's really, really nice. And now it's just like, okay, this is my like my reset time. Yeah. Of like, okay, there, there's no pressure in this. There's yeah. nothing that I, other than trying to gain more knowledge and practice, yeah. there's really nothing that I should be expecting of myself in this situation. You yeah. Know? That's really, that's a great mindset. Yeah. Because I would think... If you are a really good dancer, there's this different level of stress where it's like, well, people are expecting yeah. me to mm-hmm. be amazing. Mm-hmm. So, like, no one's necessarily expecting me to be amazing, but I do put pressure on myself anyways. Yeah. But when you have people expecting you and you're generally called in the best group or whatever, mm-hmm. it's like if you're mess- if you're messing up, yeah. I can just imagine being in that situation. Yeah. So I'm glad you've you're you've come to a point where you're mm-hmm. like. I can actually kind of yeah. settle in and just enjoy it and yeah. whatever. Yeah, and it's nice. And 
I think I've finally also gotten to that point. The one strength I've always had is like choreo pickup. Like just nice. for my whole entire life, I think just the way that I grew up in dancing. Mm-hmm. But I think in the same time frame, I still used to put this like weird pressure on myself when like a camera came out or yeah. we went into smaller groups or someone was recording for their Instagram story or something yeah. like that. I still would just get in my head and mess up for no reason. Oh, yeah. Um, but I haven't had that feeling in a while too, which is nice of like, you know it, it doesn't yeah. matter. You know what I mean? Like, I think who cares? <laughs> once you've done it so many times, yeah. I'm sure like I used to always mess up when someone brought out a yeah. video camera, mm-hmm. even if I totally knew it. Cause yeah. I would just get in my head. Now we video almost every class. Yeah. So I do still sometimes mess up, but I'm no longer like, oh my gosh, a camera. Yeah. Now when there's Crying like, in, a, in, a, in the car, when there's like, <laughs> right? When there's like a legit professional person at Millennium, mm-hmm. I still wouldn't get in my head in general, but if I'm called to like a smaller group yeah. every once in a while, because I don't get called in that like a lot, mm-hmm. I am like, <gasps> especially because I'm like, oh, I did well enough that yeah, they, that yeah. they, put, they mm-hmm. put me in that. Yeah. So now I really can't mess it up. And yeah. one time I had a teacher... I won't say who they were. <laughs> One time I had a teacher pick me for a smaller group, and he was like, I think it was because it was like round two or round three, so I actually had it like yeah. pretty decent, and it was hip hop, and he was like, "Art, right, do you have do you have it? Do you have it?" Oh my gosh, I was like dying. Maybe <laughs> I was like, <laughs> maybe I don't. I mean, I think so. I like yeah. didn't know what to say. I'm like because I'm not someone that's like doing that a lot. So I was yeah. like, I mean, I did have it. Obviously, that's why he noticed me. But like, mm-hmm. I now that he asked me that, I feel a, a higher level of yeah. stress about it. Like, like he I'm wants not sure a now. <laughs> and literally, I got so stressed that I I was just like Tracy, just get out of your head. Just, yep. You got it. You got mm-hmm. it. And so like, you know, we're improving at the beginning and I'm trying to like exude as much yep. confidence as possible. Yep. And then we started it and I was like going and then all of a sudden I got in my head and I like just completely forgot the next step. And then I was out for about like five, eight counts. Yeah. I was just like, I, I, I kept trying to jump back in and I was like, I don't know what yep. happened. <laughs> we have all been there. <laughs> all I been. felt like, I felt like, Oh, I disappointed yeah, yeah, yeah. them, you know, but the next, the very next day or something, another teacher put me in a small group, which I was taking a lot more hip hop during that little season. Cause Time. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not taking like hardly any hip hop right now, but, yeah. um, and I was like, okay, this is happening again. And he didn't say anything like that to me, mm-hmm. but I was still like, oh my gosh, I just messed it up yesterday. Yeah. So I was like, Tracy, no, you got this. Yeah. And I, I didn't mess it up. Yes. I was so <laughs> proud of myself. I was like, okay, yep. you can do this. You know, mm-hmm. I just think it's like the more you do it, the yep. less in your head about it. And it's also it just a are. mental game too. Like you you give yourself so much anxiety for a situation that That's realistically not, it doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't like matter. realistically, it, truly, and I know it's, I mean, it's fully my job, but like class isn't my job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. not... It's a way to get better at my job, yeah. but it's I'm not being paid to be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, realistically, the only person that I'm hurting is myself if I'm giving myself so much pressure or so much anxiety about how I do in a group for 45 yeah. seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess it's like you, if you're trying to make it in the dance world, you you want these teachers to like, yeah, feel like yeah. you're reliable and mm-hmm. you're not going to mess it up. So I guess, I mean, for me, I'm not at that point or level, but I can imagine people ha- putting that stress because of that type of yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. But um, what was I going to say? I just lost it. So, okay, let's go. Oh, so you're still talking about, so your daily life, you teach these different classes, but you also were talking about like rehearsals and things like mm-hmm. that. So what, can you talk at all about what kind of gigs or things you're doing that you're rehearsing for? Yeah. Um, I guess I'll talk about the most recent one that okay. I just did. Um, I should a Netflix movie. Yes. That's, that's amazing. Uh, my first Netflix job. I've done okay. like Peacock and shows, TV, all that stuff, but I've never done Netflix. That's which is great. Really yeah, that's super cool. Like my membership's paying yes. off. No, just <laughs> <laughs> but <funny>. um, <laughs> yeah, it was actually a tap job, Oh, which was super exciting. They come once in a blue moon. Yeah. No one ever wants tappers anymore. Aww. <laughs> um, but it was awesome. We had pretty long rehearsals. It was like a 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. plus a fitting next day. <laughs> okay, we are back. There was a little <laughs> intermission. If our lighting looks different, it's because we're literally sitting in my car outside of Millennium, and it is 
like 100 degrees. Yep. I mean, realist. Okay. Valley heat. <laughs> I don't know what the degrees actually are, but it feels like 100 degrees, especially because my car is black interior. Yep. And literally, Sydney's in the middle of telling her story, and I'm like actively listening. And she's like, wait, or should we stop? Because my phone just was like. The temperature. It's too hot. Yep. And it just like shut off. So yep. we now, we put up some things to block the light. Yes. And here we are again. <laughs> Anyways, back to Sydney's story. Yeah. She was telling us about her Netflix yep. job that she just mm-hmm. got, which is super exciting. So, yeah. Um, so we did, yeah, rehearsals, fittings. I think we only had two or three days of rehearsals, but they're all in a row and it kind of takes up the whole day. So if you want to take class, really the only one you're going to get to is the 8.30 one. And then you're also like, I've been dancing for (laughs) 19 hours. I don't know if I can. Oh my God. But then we did a two day shoot. It was super easy. And I will say it wasn't super easy, but it was like, it was super easy in a sense of like, I love what I do, so it was like it didn't really feel like a job. Yeah. But I will say that the cast and the team, I have never worked with a better group of people in my life. Uh, like the director and the videographer, everyone was just so it was like a family and everyone was joking and it nothing was super serious. Sometimes when you get on those bigger jobs, everyone's kinda like very tense. Yeah. And, all of that stuff, never once did I feel wow. that way. They were just joking around. One of the guys looked like Adam Sandler, and we were like, we called him Adam Sandler all week, and he was <laughs> joking around with us, and he would do like a happy Gilmore joke. We were fed really well. Nice. That always we makes had a difference. breaks. We had people bringing us water whenever we needed. Oh, nice. Makeup touch-ups, hair touch-ups. They were quick, efficient. Like, Can you was... talk about like what your – are you allowed to talk about what – kind of your part was in it or is that like confidential um okay and maybe not. it's confidential okay yeah, not sure. but you'll see it too <laughs> but you're uh, were you tapping were you can you talk about like were you um in a group of tap dancers yes okay it was a group of us and we were in heel taps which oh, that's i was right just, yeah you were telling me about that which okay. i have never done um didn't own wow. a pair that's interesting didn't that you even... never have mm-hmm. in all of your years of tap well i get booked for like my style of tap if that makes sense because okay, like my real sense. and like my choreography and all of that stuff is very me, so I don't ever really change it unless it's like a curriculum of like, we need 60s, that's the setting, and you know, yeah. flapper, whatever, all of that stuff. But I typically get hired for the style of tap that I do, yeah, which is more unique than not a little bit, okay. just because it's more hip hop and less old school yeah (laughs) which no hate love 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 that's where it all came from but um so yeah I've never done healed tap before that's cool and you were able to just you just put them on and you went it didn't feel good but I did it (laughs) it's hard because I I don't feel as grounded like I it was strange because I was like well I dance in heels all the time and I love dancing in heels but when I put heel taps on, I think for me, my choreo is always very grounded and like I'm bending my knees constantly and I'm not necessarily like pulled up in a sense. And then the heels, I was like, where's the ground? <laughs> I don't know where my heel is. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. You're like so far away from the ground. Yeah. And this is really, really gross too. But I never in my life have worn socks with my tap shoes. Oh, okay. Because you like to them. feel because you I like feel it to more. feel the taps like. I refuse to get new tap shoes because I just, I hate breaking in new dance I'm shoes. Sure, it's yeah. just the worst thing ever. It's not the worst thing ever, but it, to yeah, me, no, I'm like, I know, oh. I get it. But I never wear socks ever just because I okay. like to feel like the taps and like sound and feel more grounded. And they had us in like tights too and like a fishnet, whatever. And I was like, oh my God. So now I don't have, <laughs> now I don't have my wow. traction. Now I'm a funny heel. It was just really funny. But I mean, you adjust. It's in my body. You know what I mean? It's just like maybe a little bit of like a weight transfer and figuring out to yeah. be more like pulled up rather than more grounded. And it was, it was fun. It was really, 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 really good group of people. That's like awesome. I was just very thankful that that was who was there yeah you know and did you already know any of the people that you were tapping with I knew a couple people um just from like dance but it was actually one of the first jobs where I didn't necessarily know majority which was cool I didn't know the choreographer at all I didn't know the um assistant choreographer and they were just gems I mean just literally so sweet yeah great to work with and efficient and we tapped with the main girl in the movie too and she was amazing just the sweetest most down-to-earth like 
person and just so willing to learn tap and happy. Uh, you know, it was yeah. just, it was overall such a great group of people and experience that it makes me just appreciate and know that we are treated well, yeah. you know, like it, that, that it's possible. I'm sure that's <laughs> you know? not yeah. generally the, not always. the case, I no, imagine. No, no. <laughs> but we're always happy to be there. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's interesting because I feel like when I used to pursue acting and I did a lot of extras work in the mm-hmm. beginning, that, I mean, generally we weren't treated that great. Yeah. But then certain sets, certain TV shows, certain movies, well, movies were generally treated a little bit better yeah. mm-hmm. but tv shows most of the time we weren't yep. but every once in a while when there was a show that did a really great job and mm-hmm. like still provided the extras like really good food, yeah that, it was just so noticeable yes and especially when the crew is like yes. talking to you and treating yeah. you like a person that was so nice mm-hmm. but to think of that happening to dancers really like makes me sad because extras it's like okay anyone can sign up for that you know mm-hmm. but dancers actually have not to put extras down but like it's not like you're training your whole life to be an extra yeah. you know mm-hmm. so like you're you have danced so much mm-hmm. and done so much work and spent lots of money and time to mm-hmm. get to a point where you could be cast in yeah. a movie and then to not be and i just think this is how it is in the dance world in general it seems like to not be like paid the amount you should be paid or treated a certain way yeah. it's just sad because you're like do you know mm-hmm. what i did to get here you mm-hmm. know i can imagine the feeling and of i that. think it speaks volumes to that even though we aren't necessarily always treated or paid the way that we're supposed to we always want to be there yeah. and we'll always and forever still yeah. take the job yeah do you know what i mean because so we I love think, it yeah, yeah and like it's what i've worked my whole life for you yeah. know what i mean so it's like how do i how do I not? And that's also part of the reason why it's not fixed as well, because there's always someone that will, will take do. the everyone job. Will still do it. There is still Somebody someone will. will that that will take that job. Yeah. So it's like, I can't even say that I'm doing anything to help it because I still take the job. You know what I mean? Like, I will because I love it, and yeah. you know, anything that I can experience is a blessing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. So. Well, it's a great. That's a great attitude to have. Yeah, it's a it's a tricky line yeah. because you like yeah, it is maybe an issue that needs to be fixed, but maybe there's other ways to go about fixing it. Than, yeah, like like I shouldn't jobs, have to. Yeah, I, I shouldn't know. have to say no to something that I really really want to do. I mean, if you can afford to take it, I think it's just a matter of like if you can. Yeah, maybe someone is like, mm, I need to make more money than this. Right yeah, than, right this mm-hmm. second or whatever, and they can't take it. Yeah, but if you're able to because of whatever reason, you have these other gigs or you have saved some money or. You have really cheap rent right now, which yeah. it would be crazy in no LA. One does. <laughs> no one does. No one does. I actually have a pretty good deal. I'm not yeah. going to see what it is, but it's not like cheap, but like I'm pretty blessed. You feel confident so, about I mean, it, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty blessed. I'm pretty confident that I probably shouldn't move anytime yep. soon. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think if you can do it and mm-hmm. then do it, but if there's other opportunities to speak up or try to help things change, maybe there's other ways. But yeah, um, yeah that's amazing. Was that how many shoot days was that? Two. Oh, wow, mm-hmm. it's only two days. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I was picturing it being like I, I was too, and I also was like shocked that they had like already edited some of the scenes oh, when wow. we got there on day two. Oh. Like they showed us a little like oh, the intro cool. to the movie because we're like kind of right at the beginning. Okay, and I was like, "You're like, how wait, did I- you?" <laughs> You're like, wait, I can watch the movie. Uh, yeah, right I was now? like, I'm very confused. They You're were like, aren't so we quick. making the movie? Like, yeah, I was like, how did you even get this? <laughs> like, that is hilarious. But they were so, like I said, just quick and wow. efficient, and didn't waste our time, and got all like only necessary shots. Yeah, you know what I mean. And we were still fed, and we we looked beautiful, and the costumes uh-huh. are great. Like it was. That's amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Do you know when it's gonna come out? I think this December. Okay. Oh, that's not too far away. I think. Okay. Um, from what I've heard. All right. But I mean, you never know yeah. for sure. But that's exciting. I'm excited to see yes. that. That'll be so cool. See a friendly face. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Sydney, let's go back to how you got started in dance because you're from Ohio. Yes. I imagine you started your training there. Yes. So let's talk about that. Um. Okay. So I started at two years old. Two. Two okay, years I think that's the old. earliest I've heard so far, actually. Yes. I definitely started before I was supposed to. <laughs> um, because, so, the studio that I grew up at is a very generational studio. So, my mom danced there. Oh, okay. And the owner um, 
like her daughter now teaches there. It's all very like all of the kids I that see. my mom danced okay. with, they all dance with me. It's very you know. Yeah. Like, everyone's a family and it's yeah. Ohio. Like it's a, it's a small place, <laughs> you know. Um but yeah, so I started early cuz they were they knew that my mom had me and they're like, "Well, we're doing a summer splash thing." And my mom's like, "Well, she's too. She's You're still like- in diapers a little bit." And I went actually <laughs> to my first class in diapers. I still had like oh my gosh. a little, That's you know, hilarious. thing You're under like- my leotard. It was an acro class. I had pigtails and I took acro and tap for my first remember my first when two. When you were two. Yes. Do you and- re- do you actually remember when you were two doing that, or do you just, I just told things? No, like... I mean, there's picture, like, okay, there's all okay. the, like, like, the little like... camcorder thing of me just, like, jumping up and down <laughs> on the air track, <laughs> all that, that stuff. so cute. Um, but I do, I started remembering probably around, uh, maybe, like, four-ish, because um, I started doing competition really early, too. Like, I wow. was in my first comp at five but I was four at the beginning of the year wow so we got into it quick (laughs) we got into it quick and my first competition number was tap okay and then I obviously got older and they allowed me to start doing all other styles so I trained in everything okay um so I can tumble still can tumble did all of that started competing at five competed until I was 18 so my dance teacher growing up so it was Patty's Dance Center um and then her and daughter, we're in Ohio. Columbus. Okay, Columbus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Newark, which, but you wouldn't know where that is. No. <laughs> but Columbus is okay. the close. I lived in Columbus and I drove like 45 minutes every day to dance. Okay. Um, But my dance teacher growing up still to this day is the, the biggest genius I know. Like just her creative process and mind and the way that she runs the studio and the way she teaches and incredible like Mm -hmm. I am just beyond that's cool beyond grateful for her love you if you watch this um but yeah so I trained with her my entire entire life and we had a really good relationship I went through a lot when I was younger um and dance was my like one my one thing my home my everything Mm -hmm. got me through school got me which I know were you Going to school? Did you ever, were you always going to school and doing that afterwards? Always. Okay. Always, yeah. So I would get out of school at like three and I'd drive straight to my dance studio okay. and I'd dance until like 10 ish okay. every single night. And then I'd go home and I'd do my homework and then I'd wake up at six every day. Um, Crazy. Every single day of the week. Wow. Um, and my mom is also a school teacher. So like okay. grades were super, really, in, really, really important. Yeah. Like there, was, there was no B's, there was no all of that wow. stuff. Which I am very thankful that I was naturally blessed with like learning quickly and you know what I mean time yeah. management and all of that stuff I'm very type a in a sense of like this 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 has to be you know but yeah so I dance was my one thing I always 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 knew that I wanted to be a professional dancer since I was seven wow. nine ten um my mom likes to share this story We started going to Broadway Dance Center in New York for, like, a week in the summer. So, like, our studio would just go. Whoever was able to go, we would go on the competition team. And I think it was – I was probably, like, nine, I think, on my first trip that I went. And all of the older girls were taking Luam's class, uh, which I don't know if you – Luam's just – Is that hip-hop? What is that? Yeah. Just genius. Just genius and she always did the midnight classes back in the day they would do like 10 30 to midnight classes. really mm-hmm. that's cool back at bdc and all of the younger girls obviously were done because it's late. we can't we can't yeah. do the advanced hip-hop class at nine years old but i begged my mom i was like can i please just stay and watch this like i don't want to go back and all the girls were younger and they wanted to go back and play at the hotel and like hang out and I was like I don't want to do any of that I want to sit here until midnight and watch Luam's class and like try and learn it from the window and then my mom was just like that's when I knew that this is this wasn't like a joke or like an after school activity or like make friends or like bonding moment she's like I knew that this was it for you yeah yeah with having such a strong passion for it and like knowing it's what you want to do professionally and being so like focused even from a young age do you feel like you were still able to like make friends in classes and stuff or was it 
did everyone feel like a competition or was it just like you're so focused on getting better yourself that you're like not even seeing other people or I I definitely will say that my social life probably wasn't the same as everyone else in high school. Okay. I I went to a high school where it was just not my type of people. Okay. I definitely had some core friends that I still have to this day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in my neighborhood and um, some people I met through like my senior year, I cheered for the school because I was dating a guy on the football team. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I did some things that like most people was, but I wasn't involved with the school. Like okay. I went to school and I left immediately and went to dance and I yeah. came back. And then my weekends were filled yeah. with dance, which I wanted. Like it wasn't like yeah. a, ugh. I just, I being right. forced to do this, like I would much, 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 much rather be at dance than yeah. go to this party on a Saturday yeah. night, yeah. which like I did senior year, junior year, whatever, but I definitely didn't have the same social life and other people also didn't understand that I was like, I never wanted to go to college. I never wanted to do this. And at the time dance wasn't as big of a like career and as normal to just be like, yeah, I'm not going to go to school. I'm not going to do this. And especially from Ohio where everyone goes to college, you know, and Uh does the whole normal nine to five. And I've never wanted that ever in my life. So a lot of people didn't understand or people would laugh at like, even at high school graduation when they like announce where they're going and they're like, she's moving to LA to dance. And everyone was like, Okay. (laughs) She's going to be broke. (laughs) But it was, I didn't have that normal thing. And then with with dance, I will say that it was very, very, very family oriented. Okay. So, I, I mean, it was my second family. Was there some issues? Yeah, of course. Like someone gets mad that you get this position or that you're in every single dance. And it's like, I don't think that I deserve anything. I think that I work for everything mm-hmm. that I get. Um, I don't think anyone deserves anything. You know what I mean? Um, so there obviously was some like jealousy issues or people not being very nice. Um, and that's just one of those things that I feel like builds your character. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it kind of prepped me for this too, because not everyone's nice and not everyone is going to be (laughs) looking for your best interest. You know what I mean? But for the most part, like truly I had a fan, fan, fantastic experience Mm, growing up with dance. Like just my dance teachers and majority of the people around me, everyone, above me and below me were just amazing and we were a family and I feel like we're closer than most competition studios I feel like a lot of it these days is very like you were saying like competitive and at each other's throats and for the most part at mine like we I was so so fortunate for the community that my dance teacher created she didn't tolerate people being unkind she didn't tolerate the whatever she's like this is your team this is who is supporting you if you don't support them you're harming yourself like you know what I mean it's one of those things and it definitely builds character and you know what I mean built me to be the person I am I'm always gonna be nice to someone when I walk into a room I'm always gonna tell someone they're doing great when I see them doing great in class or you know what I mean bring a positive energy to my class and the way I teach it was was very 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 fortunate like I can't say enough good things about Mm, the studio that I grew up at yeah um and do you are you still friends like are you still connected with a lot of those people or some of them from the studio um or any of them out here I yes so my current roommate actually we grew up dancing together uh he doesn't dance anymore he works in film okay and then my other friend that I grew up dancing with moved out to do hair And so they're my two best friends. And so we all, we still, we hang out every single day. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Do they still dance for fun? Um, Dan, no. (laughs) My current (laughs) roommate, no. I mean, he dances around the house to like his music, (laughs) but no. And he knew it wasn't ever going to be like something. But Desi, yeah, like if I workshop like my choreo, like heels or hip hop, like she always, she'll come and she'll dance with me. She'll take a class every now and then, you know, um, and she's still so talented. You should still dance. Um, but yeah, or when I teach back at home, she'll assist me like it, she still will oh, cool. dance. And then I literally talk to my dance teacher like every single day. Really? Yeah. She's like my Aww, second mom. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. I'm like, this is how this day went. 
<laughs> and you go back and you teach at that studio? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's I so cool. don't get home as much as I like to get home um, just because it's hard and expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but every December I do go home for every Christmas. That's like for sure the flat line. Nice. And I always teach um, master classes when I go home that's to awesome. all my students. Yeah. And was your mom, it sounds like she was, was she always like supportive, even though she was a teacher and cared about school when mm-hmm. you were like, I am like not going to go to college, I'm going to do dance. Like, mm-hmm. was she always, always supportive? Oh, she's my number one fan. Yeah. Literally. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. if, if she was helping you get to class every single day, yeah. I would imagine she mm-hmm. was. But Yeah. Oh, I mean, wow. and she was a single parent too, so wow. paying for those bills and all that. Like, uh-huh. I, if it wasn't for her, I literally wouldn't have been able to like she and she's my big she comes and watches when she comes out here she just wants to watch me take class so she'll come come to class yeah she took my tap class she she danced oh i saw that wait she did good i know she's good because she's a dancer yeah Mm because she also did yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that was so cute i forgot about that um so then what was it like um finishing high school because did you come out here right after high school or Mm -hmm. what i graduated in may and moved in july Wow, because you already, it sounds like you knew for years, like, mm-hmm. that's what you were going to do. Yeah. But did you ever think about going to New York, or you were like, no, yes. it's going to be L.A.? I was dead set on New York my oh. entire life. Because I always never, visited. Yeah, and yeah. I'd never been to L.A., and then going into my junior year, we came out for the EDGE summer program. Okay. Like, five of us, six of us, and then as soon as that happened, I was like, fell in love <laughs> I'm moving to LA <laughs> which I will say my family was not happy about that part because they wanted you to move to New York well because it's closer it's so oh, that's much true, closer guess, like they yeah. could drive but I mean none of them were like no we yeah, don't want yeah. you to move they're like are you sure you don't want to go to New York <laughs> <laughs> positive um but yeah I literally only came here once before I moved wow. I was like this is it and I'm also not a cold weather person, so that was I know, a I lot mean, of it as well. I was going to say, like, I mean, if they're going to visit somewhere. Exactly, I yeah. Feel like, you know. Yeah, I I don't, I could never see snow again and be fine. <laughs> I'm so serious. I mean, I'm from Chicago area, yeah. so mm-hmm. I also, yeah. like Never again. I don't mind visiting, but if I visit in the winter, I don't mind seeing the snow for a couple of days. Oh. But then I, you're like, no, not at all. No, I mean, okay, maybe <laughs> Christmas. Like, maybe it's Christmas kind of day. But after a certain amount of days, you're like, mm, I'm it ready hurts. to go back. It physically it hurts, hurts to be that cold. That like, true. That it really, true. like, I remember, like, walking. We had to park, like, in high school at this, like, far lot. And all of us were, like, <laughs> dying walking into this. And oh, we're yeah. all, like, how do we warm up? We're standing in, like, huddles at the, like, stop or the walk, grass yeah. walk. Oh, I, I never felt, even when I was growing up in the Chicago area, I never felt like I was made for that weather no. even before I experienced no. California I never felt like I was made for that weather Mm-mm. and I remember we would park far away from somewhere like in high school or something mm-hmm. and then we would I remember me and my friend we would get into the car and we would just scream yes because we were so cold mm-hmm. and we're just like get to the car it hurts car. and we get in the car and then the car takes a bit to yep. heat up mm-hmm. so the second we get in the car we just be like ah! And then you get hot and you have to, like, strip off all yeah. the layers because you went from, like, negative seven to, oh, like, gosh. hot. That was me at college because I also went to college in Illinois. Yeah. And, like, yeah, I'm, like, living on campus, but I have to walk, like, pretty far to get to my class. And so I'm walking yeah. in the snow, so I'd have to put on every, 19 like, coat, layers. scarf, hat. Yep. And I remember that my English class was in this old building up, like, a bunch of sets of stairs. Mm-hmm. And, like, by the time I walked up to my class, I am profusely yep. sweating mm-hmm. and everyone's, like, ripping off all their yep. stuff. And, like, th- there's just piles of... I'm yep. like, oh, man. I just can't even imagine being a dancer in New York because no. you're taking Subway, you're... You're in cold weather. You're having to wear all these layers, mm-hmm. like, and you're bringing it around with you to different classes. Yeah. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I remember I was telling my dad one time about how, like, oh, it would be cool to live in New York and be able to take classes there. Because yeah. I do think the classes are really cool. And yeah. I took so many during the pandemic. And I only went once in person to a dance class there, but it was awesome. Mm-hmm. And it was a tap class, actually. But um, my dad was like, yeah, but you're not going to be able to get to class when you're in New York. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I took who it was Kat Ponza. Do you yeah. know her? Mm-hmm. She was really good. Yeah, and so I took her the one time I was in New York for a work trip, and I that was a class that was available for me to take in my schedule. And I'm like, I'm gonna try this tap class. I don't even know it was some kind of beginner tap, and she was so great. And then I got to take her during the pandemic yeah. for a while, so that was really cool. Aww. But okay, so you knew it was LA. So let's talk about that. So then. You move out here. Um, did you come by yourself? Or did you come with a friend? Like- my 
Well, my mom helped me move out because okay. I, again, was on crutches, so I oh, literally right. couldn't okay. move yeah. anything. Like, And did you, did you like, fall or something, or did you, like, was it, like, an overuse thing, or what was it? It was karma. Um, <laughs> long story short, my okay. senior year, like, summer job before it, like, to make a little extra money was lifeguarding. Okay. And I worked <laughs> with a bunch of people. I worked with my best friend, and she's still my best friend, but... She also was a dancer, but not at the same studio as me. And there's this other girl that we worked with that was just, like, not very nice. And um, she used to Irish step dance. Okay. Which, like, awesome. But she used to be like, I can't go up on the stand. I can't do this because I had practice earlier. And I was like, girl, I came from practice (laughs) three hours ago. I'm working and I'm going back. Like, whatever. So that night, we were just, like, joking around and... Irish step dancing <laughs> and I oh, no. shattered my foot um, and then drove myself to the ER because I knew my mom was going to kill me. Oh, like I just my knew gosh. it. So I drove myself to like the ER. Like she'd kill you if you told her the story of it. Yeah. And also that I broke my foot before moving to LA uh, and we had already signed a lease. Oh my and gosh. I drove myself to the ER and I was like, okay, whatever. It's going to be fine. I just like probably sprained it or something. To come back with the results. They're like, you can't drive home. Did you drive here? And I was like, yeah, I did. So I had to call my mom, and it was like 1 a.m., oh, which man. was not ideal. Um, but did she even know where you were? No. Well, she knew I was at my friend's house. Oh, okay. Like, she knew oh, I was right. at okay. um, Zoe's house, but I <laughs> call her, and I'm like, hey, mom. <laughs> I'm at the ER. I broke my foot. I need you to come get me. And then we also have to go to the orthopedic surgeon tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. I can't walk. What did she say? Oh, she was livid. Well, she was she was mad, but also, like, trying to be there for me, too. Cause it's, yeah. It I mean, you broke really, your foot, which sucks. <laughs> yeah, and it hadn't really hit, too, that, like, oh, my God. I'm, it's, like, changing your life, possibly. Yeah. Um. And then when he said orthopedic surgeon was kind of when, like, I lost it. And I am someone that's – I'm not a very emotional person. Like, I just – that's how I was raised. I'm yeah. not, like – it takes a lot for me to get, like, cry yeah. or, like, really, you know, feel – I don't know. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it takes a lot. I'm a very strong person. And I – it didn't hit me until they were, like, surgery. And I was, like, Aww. oh, did you start, okay. like, weeping? Yeah. And just, like, <laughs> I mean, I it wouldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about, like, what does this mean? Yeah. Like, and then I had to await the call with Edge to see, like, if they're still going to take me because they only take so many scholars yeah. a year and um, all of that stuff. And then, thankfully, they still took me. I still moved out. I had my lease. My mom moved me out. And I didn't know my roommate my other roommate at the time, but I did meet the one girl at the summer intensive at Edge. And she was a a scholar the the year before me. Okay. So that's the connection that I had. And then another girl that she knew from Montana moved in as well. So that's how we kind of did that whole thing. Okay. Um, And then COVID happened. So bye-bye that lease. (laughs) Yeah. You, that is so great. So you still moved out here. You Mm -hmm. had your broken foot. Your mom... She just helped you move out here. Yeah. She didn't, like, stay out no. here. So then you're dealing with this By broken myself. foot. And do you even have, like, insurance to – or were you still under your parents? I was still under my mom's. Okay, so that's yeah. good at least. Mm-hmm. And then – so you're dealing with fixing that in a new place you have never lived. PT on top of going <laughs> to all the classes oh plus gosh. can't walk plus groceries plus – yeah. Did you still feel, like, happy that you were here, that you were, like – at least going to edge or did you feel a lot of sadness of like oh I still can't like do it it I was mainly happy because I at least had made it to where yeah I wanted to be um but I will say it was very 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 hard to just sit and watch especially like if you see someone in the class that doesn't really care or whatever, I was like, I would give anything Mm, to trade places with you right now. And so it was really hard to watch, like, other people maybe that didn't want to be there as bad and, like, not trying or, like, would talk during the You know what I mean? It was really hard, but you learn so much from watching, too. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Like, 
I watched what looks good and what doesn't look good and technique wise when I was still taking technique classes <laughs> <laughs> always take technique um but it was it was really 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 hard to not be able to do it especially like if it was a combo that I loved like I remember um Tavares's class yeah. like I watched his class for the first time because he was on my like second semester schedule and I was like I uh-huh. would die to do this like I I even have I think a video on my phone of me like I I was still non-weight bearing but I was like trying to do it in my living room like hopping around on one foot because I just like loved the choreo like that was really hard wow I would say like the jazz and the contempt classes I was like this is great I would love (laughs) to be doing it but I was like you know it's okay I'm still learning you know but that was hard yeah Mm -hmm. Was and was hip hop always like your favorite thing from the beginning, always. or hip hop and tap? Are those both your favorite? Uh, yeah, I would say all of it. And I, I really do like if there's a jazz audition, like I'm going. Like I was a comp dancer. Like it's yeah. always in there. You know what I mean? I would I say it's my strength. No, I. Uh, but I, I'm not saying that I'm bad at it. But yeah, means, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like if you need me to leap, turn, yeah. whatever. But I will say after. Oh, I forgot to mention after I broke my foot I have permanent nerve damage so I still can't oh, feel like the whole left side of my foot which is super fun um just so- the left side of your mm-hmm. foot you can the left side of your left foot mm-hmm. wow but I so that was hard relearning and then when it came to technique like turning I my pinky toes fully dead like I can't feel it Whoa. it gets stuck all of that stuff so turning too okay just like it doesn't feel wow awesome because I can't fully ever really find my center on that foot yeah. and like I can't point out of the way because I have metal and all that stuff oh. in my foot too so it's kind of like a little dead foot wow um, it's crazy that you're so good at tap yeah. and you have like this whole foot thing it was on. a relearning process wow for sure um which was kind of good about COVID because it was like I just came back for three months which it was sad that like I left, you know what I mean? Like, when I just was getting started, but it was also, like, I had time to figure out, like, weight distribution and what I need to do for me because it's a lot different than a lot of other people. Like, it's not a normal foot, you know what I mean? Now I I can only feel, like, that toe and over. Did you go back to Ohio Mm -hmm. in the pandemic? Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you first came out here, did you – like have money saved up or were, did you have to like work as well so no one would hire me because I was on crutches and in a boot because uh, it was always like can you stand for extended periods uh, of time I'm like yeah. no I can't like actually <laughs> and also it was really really hard to find a work schedule around yeah um the edge hours right. and like the only people that really hire for that time is like bars but I was 18 okay so no one was gonna you know what I mean no yeah. one was gonna hire me to work that time um but I was very very fortunate that my mom helped me my mom did help me that first year and I also had worked all since I was legally able to work so I had money saved okay um so that like you know I was able to not stress at least for the first whatever obviously I plan to have a job when I move out (laughs) here but no one would hire me because I was on crutches um but so when you went back to Ohio because of the pandemic, what were you – were you just, like, working on stuff on your own? Were you taking classes virtually? Were you still – well, yeah, you said you were teaching virtually. Mm-hmm. Like, what did that – how long were you out there for? I went back for, I think, a year. Okay. I think I was back for a year. Um, and then I started working at my home studio again. So okay. I was assisting there, teaching there, dancing there. Um, and I was taking virtual classes. So when Edge was still doing their virtual classes and then like BBC or like Sam Allen, I would take Mm -hmm. his, like anyone that would do like a live or whatever, I would take that. I would take like Redwall, um, anything that I could. And then, yeah, I taught and I was working any job that I could work at the time. Like I, I think I flew back to LA for one music video during that time. I was nannying. I was dog walking I was plant sitting I was anything like and I was teaching fitness classes I was teaching at my studio like there wasn't one day that I like wasn't busy okay because I was just like well if I'm back here um I love Ohio I love my home studio but like it's not what I've worked my whole life for so like if I have this opportunity to 
make as much money as possible yeah. to get back out there, totally. then I will, you know? Yeah, you're, like, not paying for rent. So, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, we had a storage unit out here because I wasn't going to move oh, okay. all of myself yeah. back. But we put all my – which is not – not that much. No. Yeah. Like, it's definitely not rent. That's right, for sure. Right. <laughs> um, Maybe we should all just live in storage units secretly. Sounds like the way, <laughs> sounds like the way to me. Because it really wasn't bad. It was, like, I think 200 a month or, like, 180 a month. But, um, yeah, so I worked and I was dancing constantly back there. Um, and then as soon as I moved back, I was ready to – I was like, let's do this. Yeah. So as soon as – what was the – what was, like, the green light? Like, okay, I can move back to L.A. now. Um, When classes started back up. Okay. Here. Okay. Like, in person. At Millennium. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, just because I was like, I'm not going to move back for me to not be making right money. You know what I mean? At least, like, I mean, in Ohio, things were a lot more lenient. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> not that, like, we weren't safe or anything like that, but, like. Things opened up a little bit earlier. Yeah. You know what I mean? You were actually able to do stuff. Like, yeah. I could go see my friends or whatever. Like, I wasn't going to move back here and then not be able to go and do some stuff that I was able to do in Ohio while making money. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. And then I was like, let's, let's do it. The classes are back up. I'm back. Like, let's do it. Actually, Edge was supposed to open back up. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I moved out here, and a week later, we got an email saying that it wasn't. And I was like, Oh, so when you heard mm-hmm. they were opening back up, mm-hmm. you were like, Okay, yeah. let's go do this. Yeah, like, let's finish our Scully year. Or You're whatever. like, How many times can that happen to you? Where, like, I thought this was the best time to move, and then something yeah. happened. But, like, it always worked out in the yeah. sense that you still got some yeah. good things out of it. Mm-hmm. And that's crazy, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was, I know. Were, was your heart, like, broken about Edge? I mean, it was like, oh. It wasn't like you were there for, like, a million years, but it was yeah. still, like, a really important time. Yeah. And... I was so sad about it. And it yeah. was also, too, like, I'd known so many scholars from before that so much happened for them because of Edge, yeah. too. And to, like, kind of realize that that wasn't going to happen for me was really tough as mm. well. And also just, like, the community. It was my first, like, L.A. friends and first yeah. L.A. training and... You know what I mean? It was like, wow, my start's gone. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't have any of, like, my home base left, which was a little bit hard because, you know, it's all about connections and who you know and faces and consistent training and none of that Yeah, was – it was all gone. Because when you were training at Edge for the program, you weren't training other places, right? No. Okay. Mm-mm. So you hadn't been to, like, Millennium or anything. Mm-mm. Because I know when I, I mean, granted, I wasn't, like, pursuing dance professionally and I was taking all beginner classes, but I was at Edge almost every day because mm-hmm. I just got obsessed with it. Yeah. And I had a had a friend who was a professional dancer who told me to take class there and that mm-hmm. they had beginner classes. And so I absolutely loved it there. And I remember, like, hearing about some other studios. But I think one day I was like, maybe I will check out Millennium. I keep hearing about it. And I didn't have any regular classes on Friday. So I'm like, after work, I was like, I'm just going to drive over and try to take this, like, beginner hip hop. Yeah. And then I was running, like, a little late. There was so much traffic. And, like, right when I got here, I was like, wait, where do I park? I don't know where to park. Oh, my gosh. And I'm running late. Uh. And, like, I I gave it, like, 10 minutes. I was like, whatever. I, yeah. like, I like Edge. I don't need this. Place. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, like, Edge, the park, the parking at Edge. I could cry about losing Literally. <laughs> Literally. Amazing. It was perfect. I never had to, like, plan 20 minutes in advance to find a spot. You just go and you walk. Oh, my God. And everything's, amazing. like, lit up when yep. you're leaving so you don't have to feel and stressed. And the security sits at this at this um, two gates yeah. on each side. And they always validated parking. You never had yep, to pay uh-huh. for it. I was just, like, literally when I, when I, felt, when I heard or knew that Edge wasn't going to open back up, I was, like, parking yeah, I, <laughs> I was like I'm gonna have to figure out parking other places and like you know I figured it out and you know I've met people at other places and created communities but I feel like mm-hmm. the community at Edge like was just really special yeah. and even mm-hmm. in like the beginner the people I met at the beginner classes I just it was really special yeah. to me and I, I was devastated yeah. when they closed and even just the people that worked the front desk yeah. and I felt like I knew they knew me when I walked in yeah like, hey Tracy I'm like mm-hmm. I don't have these because yeah. it was sort of like a little family yeah so it was really sad but I mean we've all and you know those teachers have found other places yeah. and so mm-hmm. it's not like everyone 
died or something, mm-hmm, you know. Yeah. But still, it's just like it's sad that now I'm just driving so many places yeah. all the time. <laughs> but yeah. um, yeah. So I mean, you were. Do you even remember what your first LA like? job was because I feel like you were just you probably just started getting jobs pretty quick I think it was probably the music video that I flew that out you went for in the pandemic in, yeah um it was G Madison I don't remember okay from, him from Edge that sounds familiar but I don't know it was his wife's music video okay and I flew out for that I was assisting him like the last couple of months of um before COVID and then he was like I have this music video if you can get out to LA like, you're in. And I was like, oh, my God. Okay. I'm booking I'm my gonna, flight I'm right like... now. <laughs> um, yeah, that was my first, I think, big job. I did teach at a convention. Okay. Um, like, in Ohio, in Dayton, Ohio. And I was, like, really excited about that, too. That's like, cool. I taught, um, like, four ages. It was, I don't it was great. But I think those were my two, like, that was my first teaching one. And then that was my first music video. And I think that was in the span of, like two months of each other, three months of each other. It was really cool. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, none of it's surprising. Like, hearing how hard you have worked, and even in the midst of obstacles, you're not like... Because I was going to ask you, have you ever gotten, like, kind of discouraged, and was that mm-hmm. hard? And I am still going to ask you that, but, like, from what you're telling me, it seems like any kind of... People get discouraged by the smallest things, but you actually yeah. had, like, huge obstacles yeah. come up <laughs> often, it seems. Yeah. And you still were like, okay... How can I do it? Doesn't, yeah. I mean, did you ever feel like it seems like not, but did you ever feel like, oh, is it worth it? Why no. am I doing this? <laughs> no, I love this job. You're like, so no, much. I could. I mean, it's like, it's something that I've literally worked my entire life for. Yeah. Like, why would I let something get in the way of it when, you yeah. know what I mean? There's 10 times worse things that happen to yeah. people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, no, no. It's amazing. There's bad days, of course, where I'm like, oh. Yeah. But no, but never you know, have ever just been Just a like, little time in the pool and then you're back. Literally. I'm like, my one day off, I'm just going to go put a bathing suit and I'm good. So what, okay, we're kind of going to wrap it up, but like you love dance. What is like, do you have, it seems like you probably like all sorts of ways of dancing and different types yeah. of projects, but do you have for yourself like a personal like, oh, this is a dream of something I would love to do with dance one day or... Mm. just anything not even necessarily a specific gig but maybe something that you would create or do you have anything like that um so yes well I think just the current one is I want to do a U.S. tour and I want to do a worldwide tour okay of course like like every other dancer (laughs) um but the ultimate goal is I want to own my own studio oh nice so I want to start the whole process of what I did all over again so I want to do a recreational and competition studio I don't want it to be a professional studio I want to train them specifically for this Okay. Because I feel like it's it's something really hard to navigate once you get here because you come from like this very specific world and then you get out to LA and you're like, oh my gosh, we literally, other than being able to dance, I don't know how to navigate this. Mm-hmm. So I want to navigate like dancing on camera and nice being trained in all styles. So you are required to tap and you are required to do ballet and you are required to do heels and you know what I mean? Yeah. Bollywood and um, ballroom. Like I want to have really well-rounded dancers so they're not surprised when they get out here and they need to have some niche thing or they need to know how to work on camera or they need to know how to slate or what that even means yeah you know what I mean I want to start that but also have the recreational of the three-year-olds that are just there as a playground you know what I mean like you need that balance and I I want to do that that's 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 my my end goal would you see yourself doing that somewhere that's not LA yes okay I was gonna say <laughs> yeah. like for the specific dream you have I guess that would yes. make sense yeah. I will I will not live in LA for the rest of my life that's okay. for sure <laughs> once I do all of my biggest thing is like this is for sure gonna happen that's what I've been planning for my life like okay. I, I've known that I nice. wanted to own this um and like have savings for that and like what I'm putting money towards um but I will not leave LA until I've done everything that I want to do career yeah. wise okay. because I don't want to start this and then almost feel like a little bit resentment towards right. the studio of like well I could have done this if I was still there I don't want to leave and start that until I know I've done everything that I've wanted that makes to do sense. so yeah. then I go and I'm like okay now I can start a family and yeah. I can start my business and move away but it's definitely not in LA no, <laughs> or in that. California <laughs> but what about the weather situation are you going to try to find another place that's 
still has really oh good yeah okay. i'm going to a beach okay <laughs> i am going to a beach but it's definitely gonna be an east coast beach my mom retires to florida in may oh nice um and i want to be close to my mom Aww. so that she can watch my kids <laughs> once i have kids <laughs> you like have it all planned us, oh listen i told you type a um and then yeah, so I probably won't live in Florida just because I there's already a huge studio population there, and I'm going off of like business tax and location and population of studios and how okay. many kids are in the area. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So I'm looking at like South Carolina ish, okay. um, to where she's like a seven hour drive for me or an hour flight. Yeah. Um, and. Property tax is low, you just all of that stuff, but still where I will not see snow. <laughs> and I can either go to a beach or a lake, and the coldest it gets is, like, out here. So, yeah. I love that. I feel like all of this is definitely going to happen because mm. I can see that you don't let anything, like, get in the way. Yeah. I think the only way it wouldn't happen is if you – or if it happened a little different is if you just decided to, like, tweak yeah. your vision or something. But. Mm-hmm. I think that's amazing. I love that whole vision. Do you, I think we'll wrap it up with, do you have any advice for dancers in general, Ooh. dancers in LA or outside um, of LA? I think along what we were just talking about is like being okay with things not necessarily going exactly how you planned mm, it. Yeah. Like of course, um, I'm still young. Like I'm 23. Like mm-hmm. I am, I am young <laughs> and I acknowledge that, but I, Sometimes I I see, I'm like, why haven't I been on a tour yet? Why haven't I worked with this? Why haven't done the Grammys? Why haven't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think not setting a specific timeline for yourself, mm-hmm. obviously having goals and working towards those goals, but not putting too much pressure on like, well, this is happening for other people, so why isn't it happening for me? I think just trusting that it's going to happen. If you, if you put in the effort, it's going to happen for yeah. you. And not putting a specific timeline on it, even though it's hard because I'm, yeah. I'm totally a 10-year plan person. And, like, <laughs> if, I, if it doesn't go this way, I'm going to, like, freak out. But I I think it's it's going to happen. And great things. I've worked amazing jobs. I've traveled overseas for jobs. I've done all this stuff. But I think not putting pressure on yourself and comparing yourself to other people and where they're at in their journey, yeah. you know, I think that's my only advice. And I'm still personally working on that. You know what I mean? And But I think... Yeah. I think and, that's the best thing. And everyone has different specific visions yes, too. So yes. like everyone's story is different. Mm-hmm. So it's And be good. grateful. Yeah. Be grateful that you can dance, I think is my biggest thing. Yeah. Is, you know. Yeah. We are so blessed to be able to do this, especially as a job and you know what I mean? I just think being grateful for the fact that we are capable and we have rhythm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does not come naturally. <laughs> yeah. So true. Mm-hmm. Well, Sydney, this has been amazing. Yay. Thank you so much for taking the time on your day off to be on my podcast. <laughs> um, love your story. I'm so excited to continue to follow it. And yeah. just like now that I know kind of what your plan is, I'm like, all right, let's root for you even more specifically, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Like, follow, subscribe. Mm-hmm review yes. all those things and where's we'll... the button i'm like where is it <laughs> <laughs> somewhere <laughs> um we'll see you next time yeah thank Bye. you <laughs>